in occasione del congresso di Pisa sulla vitamina D e le patologie del metabolismo osseo in età pediatrica abbiamo avuto l'opportunità di intervistare il professor Olic, uno dei massimi esperti a livello mondiale sulla vitamina D. Professor Olic, la carenza di vitamina D è un problema diffuso a livello mondiale? Well, I think that um, the basic message is that vitamin D deficiency is a worldwide epidemic and that it's equally common in Italy as it is in the United States and that we need to realize that pregnant women, lactating women, children and adults should be taking a vitamin D supplement to satisfy their vitamin D requirement and to get some sensible sun exposure and to eat foods that are good in calcium as well as in vitamin D. Quali sono le raccomandazioni attuali della Endocrine Society sulla supplementazione di vitamina D e quali sono invece le sue personali raccomandazioni? So the recommendation from the Endocrine Society for neonates for first year of life is 400 to 1000 units a day and for children 600 to 1000 units a day over the age of 1 and adults 1500 to 2000 units a day. My recommendation is all children should be on 1000 units of vitamin D a day, adults 2 to 3000 units of vitamin D a day. Lei è a favore dello screening di routine per i livelli di vitamina D? We don't recommend that people should be screened. It's just too expensive. Simply if everyone gets enough vitamin D from supplements, sunlight and diet, you don't need to screen. But if you have certain disorders, like you have malabsorption problems, you can't absorb vitamin D, such as Crohn's disease, or if you have sarcoidosis, for example, which you're sensitive to vitamin D, or if you have liver disease, those are the is patients that should be evaluated. Also, patients with uh, obesity usually need two to three times more vitamin D to be able to satisfy that requirement. Quali sono le persone a rischio di deficit di vitamina D e che necessitano della supplementazione? Vitamin D deficiency um, causes subtle clinical findings. For children sometimes the first clinical finding of course will be rickets or in teenagers um, growing pains in their bones and then for adults aches and pains in their bones and muscles or sometimes stiffness in their joints can be associated with vitamin D deficiency. But we also know that vitamin D deficiency may increase risk of many chronic illnesses. So for children, may increase risk for type 1 diabetes, multiple sclerosis, and rheumatoid arthritis later in life. And for adults, increased risk for heart disease, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and even later in life, dementia, as well, of course, of osteoporosis and risk of fracture. Ci possono essere degli effetti di tossicità legati alla somministrazione di vitamina D? Vitamin D toxicity is extremely rare, even though doctors are very concerned about it. And even the Institute of Medicine and Endocrine Practice Guidelines Committee states that neonates can easily take 2,000 units of vitamin D a day. Children, 4,000 units of vitamin D a day is perfectly safe. And adults, up to 10,000 units of vitamin D is perfectly safe. But if you're taking large amounts, tens of thousands of units of vitamin D a day for a long period of time, maybe a half a year, your blood calcium can go up, you can increase risk for cardiovascular calcification and calcification of your kidneys. So you don't want to take excessive amounts of vitamin D. But certainly within the amounts of vitamin D I've recommended, you should not worry about toxicity. Stiamo andando verso l'estate, quindi siamo più esposti ai raggi solari. In questo periodo raccomando ugualmente la supplementazione di vitamina D. So, I personally take 2000 unit supplement plus my other sources, I get 3000 units of vitamin D a day and I cycle and like to play tennis outside, only sun protection on face, not on arms and legs. And we recently have developed an app for the iPhone called Dminder, D M I N D E R dot info where you can actually take your phone outside and we'll tell you how much vitamin D you're making when you're exposed to sunlight and we also tell you when you're exposed to too much sunlight to definitely wear sun protection. So for example, in the summertime, if you use a sun protection factor of about 30, it reduces your ability to make vitamin D in your skin by as much as 95 to 98%. 
And also people of color, of dark skin pigmentation, need to be exposed often five to 10 times longer to make the same amount of vitamin D. And finally, you cannot make any vitamin D even in the summertime until about 10 a.m. and it stops abruptly at around 3 p.m. So even in the summertime when the sun is shining brightly in the early morning and late afternoon, you basically cannot make any vitamin D. And the vitamin D app can help you with that. And you can also get the information on my website, just drholick.com. So just D-R-H-O-L-I-C-K dot com.